Do you want to know how to adapt the Helios 442 to fit Nikon F mount with Infinity Focus? Would you like to know how to get even crazier shaped bokeh? If so, you can download and 3D print all these files for free. Keep watching and prepare to have some serious fun. This is the legendary Helios 44-2, and mine is made at the KMZ factory, as you can see there. My copy is quite scruffy, really. Even the glass is a bit scratched. But the rear element is OK. Today I'm going to show you how to mount this onto a Nikon F-mount camera, so that you can have full functionality with Infinity Focus. There are a few things we need to do, but it's quite simple and easy. Firstly, open up the lens by gripping both aperture controls and twisting them like this. There is a lot of thread and it will spin for quite a while. We are looking for an aluminum or an aluminium washer, depending on how you say it. This is the one here to keep. You can discard any others. Make sure that this is there so that we are working from the same point of reference. The aluminium washer is 0 0.6 millimeters thick. What we need to do next is place two washers. One is a two millimeter washer that sits behind the aperture um, iris. The other is 1.04 millimeters and this sits underneath the last rear element. I can twist the rear element free by gripping this protruding element here but you'll need a tool to remove the elements at first as they could be tight. I use my vernier calipers as a tool, as a spanning tool to untighten this. As you can see, I have a washer in mine already. It's more than just a spacing washer though, as it has a pattern on it and makes some crazy bucker, but we'll talk more about this later. Ideally, we need to fit this inside here. It sits on the ledge that holds the aperture blades together. It doesn't always go in flat first time, but don't use your fingers, use a pokey thing to carefully nudge it into place. Once it's in, you can screw the end back on, finger tight. Next is the other washer. You need a lens spanner to place this one, but once you've done that, once you've opened it, you can leave it. It doesn't need to be messed with again. As you can see, here there are two notches on each side of the ring. But there are two rings, an inner ring and an outer ring. The one we want to open for this is the inner ring. This is where the 1.04 millimeters washer will sit. And you can see it there, actually, in the between the glass. You can see mine there. The thickness of these washers is what realigns the elements to get infinity focus on the Nikon cameras. These are optional things. These are 3D printed accessories for the Helios. These help you um, more easily control the lens and I'm going to fit them on now. But these are completely optional. They're just gears that, that help you focus and use the camera when it's in front of the, the DSLR. And this is a standard M42 to Nikon F mount adapter without correct corrective glass. So I'm going to finish sticking all this back together. It's quite easy to do. Just print them out and then they should fit quite well together. 
I have a lens hood to go on also. And they're all 3D printed. It, it tends to protect the lens a little bit, this, more than, more than be useful, really. So this is what it looks like inside the lens when using one of these aperture discs. The coloured ones also tint the image slightly and I can still use the aperture blades with these inside. Wow! Look at this! This is what happens when you have a star-shaped aperture. You can see all the out-of-focus bright spots become star-shaped, and the in-focused parts have pin-dot highlights sharp. It's actually quite a good way to help focus on this old manual lens. Another thing, because this aperture disc is orange, you notice it slightly tints the image with an orange hue. But the only thing I've done to this footage is run them through a stabilising software to get rid of camera shake. No colour grading, no filters, no LUTs, nothing has been used. It's raw footage. Look how lovely this is. It's quite magical. What a crazy effect. You can do this on any lens, though. It's not something that's exclusive to Helios. You could cut out a bit of cardboard, cut another funny shape into the centre of it, and tape it to the front of your lens. It should do something similar. The reason I want to try this on the Helios was because we can place these discs right inside, near the aperture blades. This lens is renowned for its crazy bokeh, so I wanted to see what would happen if we combine these two effects. And I thought it would be interesting to see how it would all look on video. So far, I haven't noticed any of the swirly bokeh effect. But that could be for a lot of reasons. It may be because my camera's a crop frame. It may be because I haven't had the right distance. There are all sorts of possibilities. The right conditions have to be met first. It's still a very interesting effect. I haven't used the stabiliser on this clip. It's just as it was when it came out of the camera, using the standard colour profile. The Helios has got a nice colour to the, to the, to the footage. And I think that comparing it to my Carl's Ace Tazar, the Tazar seems to be less vivid, but a little bit sharper. If you can remember back earlier when I was showing you how to put the spacer, the washer, into the actual lens, it had a pattern on it. Well, this is the effect of using that particular washer. You can see the bokeh looks a bit like a flower. Crazy but very lovely. There's also this weird aura with the Helios lens, a kind of glow that bleeds out from bright objects, which I really like. You can see this soft glowing effect on this sunflower. Notice how the colour slightly bleeds out, giving it that warm glow, soft glow feeling. I'm not sure if this is the characteristic of all these Helios lenses, or if it's just unique to mine because of the glass being slightly scratched. In this shot, you can see the bokeh over there in the distance. It's a heart shaped, but it's not as pronounced as some of the other shapes. Sometimes it does come through quite, quite well, but it just happens to be very subtle in this shot. Take some time to notice the hearts in the background, how they change.
it really brings out something within the footage. Notice how sharp this is, how nicely it renders colour. You can avoid triggering the bokeh under the right conditions. But as soon as there is any bright dazzling spots, you'll see this amazing effect blast out at you. And with a flick of the wrist, you can blow the background into this weird crystallised mesh. Notice that glow about the bike seat. It really is an amazing combination, this. Notice how more or less effective some of these cutouts are. And the crazy way it distorts the background and foreground. If you liked this video, smash that like button and subscribe to be notified of any new content. See you soon.